So this question looks like it is going to be a diagram question. We know that because of the diagram, the graph here that's provided. So let's read it and let's see if there's anything we can label or we can learn um, by using this graph in order to answer the question. So the question says, in the figure below, line Q in the standard XY coordinate plane has equation, and I'm going to just write that down because I always write the equations down that are provided, negative 2x plus y equals 1. I'm going to convert this into slope-intercept form because I prefer to see equations of a line in slope-intercept form. So this becomes y equals 2x plus 1, again, where the slope is, so m being the slope is 2, and b, the y-intercept, is 1. So it says an intersects line r, which we see it does intersect it right here on the x-axis, which is distinct from line Q. Yes, we see that it's distinct at a point on the x-axis. Yes, it intersects right here on the x-axis. The angles A and angle B formed by these lines and the x-axis are congruent. Okay, well, that's, that's important. What is the slope of line R? Okay, so we want to find the slope of line R. We're basically given the equation for the line Q and then we're told this information about the angles, which may be a little odd here, but really it's the angles that help us to answer this question. So if we understand what slope means, we understand that in order for me to make this particular angle here, I have to have a particular, I'm going to call it run and rise, right, which is a slope. Right. Any different rise and run related to the shape of this line would give me a different angle. So that means if angle A is congruent to angle B, that means for angle B, or I'm sorry, for line R, which creates angle B with the x-axis, its slope must be the exact same, just the opposite sign but the exact same as the slope for line Q. Again, because this angle formed with the x-axis can only be formed under certain circumstances where you have a certain, a certain slope of the line. Okay, So because the angles are equal to each other, that means the slopes are also equal to each other, just opposite sign. So the slope of line Q is 2. And the slope of line R, therefore, must be negative 2. And therefore, my answer is choice F. Now, we could also, if you didn't like that method, we could also think about this from a truly diagram strategy point of view, which is the diagram or the question does not say that the figure is not drawn to scale. So I could test each of these answers. So when I look to test choice F, I could say, well, let's see, if I put a point right here, and I'm trying to get to this point here, how far do I rise? Well, I rise down two, right? That's a distance of negative two vertically. And I run over one, right? Because again, this is like a negative one and one half here. This is negative half, so that's a distance of one, which means that my slope of line R would actually equal negative two. Now, when I try to test out negative one half, it won't work. Again, I start here. Negative one half would mean that I went down one, which is there. And then by going over two, this would be one, and that actually be two. I'd be way over here, right? That's the line that would have a slope of negative one half. So that's out. And then, of course, uh, we cannot, line R definitely does not have a positive slope, so choice H and J are gone, and then cannot be determined from the given information. That's a tempting answer, but um, again, because of what I mentioned here, and because they did give us the graph, right? The graph is given information, so I could always just use the visual on uh, finding the slope there, so K is out for that reason. So choice F is the best answer.